there's no way. I think I've already failed. Smash, literally smash. I would sell my left kidney to go skinny dipping with Charlie Lastra. I hate when she's right. Girl, what were you on? What were you doing? What were you thinking? But then it's written like a Wattpad fan fiction and not the good kind. friends how are we doing i personally am exhausted so i am clearly as you can tell going to be doing a 24-hour readathon it is a very busy week starting today was the only way i was going to be able to do this particular video but it's okay i've just been in a reading slump it's raining the weather is on our side today i absolutely love this so i'm starting a lot later than i wanted to it is currently six o'clock in the evening I was planning on starting it at noon. Life goes on. So I asked everyone over on my Instagram story whether I should read for 24 hours straight or I should split it up into 12 hour intervals. I wasn't sure how much I actually valued my sleep schedule. So initially I was thinking this was going to be a good way to reset. That way Thursday night when I went to sleep, I would be exhausted. I'm not a woman in STEM. I'm not sure that's the way it works, but let's see shall we yes oh actually <laughs> i love you all so much so i posted this initially when i posted it everyone that voted said read for 24 hours straight but now everyone is saying read for 12 hour intervals god bless you all where would that put me so let's say i started at 6 15 even then <laughs> I definitely should have started earlier. Since I haven't been reading the past couple of days, I also just need to catch up on my June TBR. So far, I've actually only read books that I said I was going to read this month, so I am very proud of myself. So there's still a couple books I need to read. There's also an arc I need to get to because it comes out on June 23rd. The author also recommended that I read the book that comes before it. So those are both gonna be read on my Kindle. I asked everyone whether I should start with my Kindle or my physical. They said to start with the physical. I totally Totally agree I was planning on doing that anyway <laughs> I value your opinion I truly do I would have started with the Kindle actually I've also just been in a fan fiction mood I'm gonna be completely transparent about that So getting back into it, these are the physical books I'm thinking about reading. I'm actually thinking I'm only going to be able to read two of these, but I wanted to give myself options. So I'm thinking that today and tonight I will read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry because it is our June book of the month for our book club, Lessons in Love, Over on Fable. You should totally join if you haven't already. It is the third Emily Henry book we've read this year. So all that's going to be left to read after this is going to be Book Lovers, manifesting that for July's book. But it is one of my holy grail summer book recs. It's just so cozy and nostalgic. I always tell people it's the most controversial out of her books. Controversial in the sense that you either love it or hate it. I personally love it, obviously. I'm in a little predicament because I never got more of these particular book tabs that I used. So these are the post-it brand, whereas now I just buy mine off of Amazon. The issue is that I have a ton of post-it tabs, but not the pink and the purple ones that I use the most. But I think I am going to start with this one and then I might save Better Than The Movies as the last book I read after my Kindle books. It's been on my TBR for so long. It just seems like such a cozy read. I've also been seeing so many edits lately. It's been making me so excited to read it then i'm planning on reading the sister between us it is a Haley dickert book so she sent me the return policy that comes out on june 23rd 
I've seen so many raving reviews about this book, so I'm very excited to read it. Yes, okay, I think that just settled it. I'm going to start with People We Meet on Vacation, then I'm going to go into The Sister Between Us, and then I'm going to go into The Return Policy, then I'm going to go into Better Than the Movies if there's still time left. So I'm just going to read until I can't anymore, essentially. So I think I'm just going to update you every hour. We all know I talk way too much, so I think that's going to be the best plan of attack. So without further ado, let's get into it. There's no way. I think I've already failed because it is 8.30. <laughs> so I talked to you, ate dinner then came back, but then it started storming. I just zoned out. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely transparent. I've just been thinking about George Weasley lately. I've been back in my George Weasley era. Maybe I just never left, but I'm currently on page eight of people we meet on vacation. I messed up, I did, truly. But I've been updating everyone in the book club and I don't remember Alex being this hot. <laughs> I don't. So literally in the first, three pages this was my annotation i was like i'm down bad so bad i think a lot of it is because i'm rereading it so i'm just noticing a lot more than i did before i'm just trying to be more cognizant of it but she said despite the 80 something degree weather and 1 million percent humidity he's dressed in a rumpled long sleeve button up and navy blue trousers have you seen a man in navy blue dress pants please tell me you have there's no way you haven't that is my version of gray sweatpants so good <laughs> so so good he's also so romance reader girly coded he's so me he's also reading a book in the bar that they're at my annotation was and i quote he better be an ao3 girly there's no respect for him if he's still reading wattpad you're a grown man i don't remember this quote at all i never tabbed it when i read it the first time around so it was oh my goodness where is it Okay, so apparently I did tab it, but I am actually annotating it this time, so I'm not just tabbing it. So she says, you love me. He says, I know that. She says, I love you back. He fights the wiping of his smile, keeps a smile and faith. I know that too. <laughs> Say less. <laughs> when is it my turn? He also smells like cedarwood, so smash, literally smash. That's as far as I am. But I will update you at 9 30. it's actually 8 35 so i will update you at 9 35. okay so it's currently 9 30 9 38 if you want to be exact <laughs> i am only on page 29. i want to believe in myself truly i do but i don't think i'm going to be able to last 24 hours straight actually let me rectify that i know i won't be able to last the 24 hours straight inevitably i am going to go to bed probably around 3 a.m which will only lead to me being more tired tomorrow essentially what i've gathered is that i just imagined alex as a jobless person yes i've read this book before but i completely forgot that he was a teacher that's so hot he's smart and hot he can teach me a thing or two that's all i'm gonna say about that i've got a couple notes in here I'm gonna at least try to get halfway through the book before I call it quits for the night, but I will check in with you in an hour. Okay, so it's currently 10.35 and I am on page 77. I don't remember this book being this funny. Their banter is absolutely everything. I just love Emily Henry. She just knows how to put a person in a good mood. So the book is told in alternating timelines, so every other chapter is one from their past. So they just got in a ride chair, and the other two people in the car were a married couple. They were on their honeymoon. They struck up a conversation, and Poppy and Alex are pretending to be a couple, and they get asked how they met, and... Alex says Disneyland then Poppy tells them that he was a vomit scooper and he tells them that she was like Mike Wazowski I don't remember that at all but it is gold the banter is absolutely unmatched I just can't imagine living in a world where Emily Henry doesn't write good banter it's just so her to write bantery angsty couples I'm absolutely living for it I also totally did not remember that he had an on and off again girlfriend Sarah that name is a red flag. 
I think she comes back into the picture in the middle of the book as sort of a way to build tension. Either way, I'm absolutely living for it. I love the drama. I vaguely remember what the climax ended up being. You know when people say, these are books I wish I could read for the first time again? That's what reading this feels like just because I don't remember anything. So take this as your sign to reread your favorite books because truthfully, most of the time for me, I've only ever done two rereads and ironically, they were both Emily Henry novels, Beach Read and then this. But both times, it was completely different than the way I remembered it. But I've tabbed a lot more. So the good news is I've only had to change my purple tabs because I don't have any more of the ones I was using. So those are the only ones that are gonna look different. But truthfully, you can't even tell that much. I will update you at 11.30. I'm definitely probably still gonna be awake, so. Okay, so it is currently 11.42. I am only on page 83 of people we meet on vacation. I promise I'm actually not this slow of a reader. I just get distracted so easily, so because I'm also trying to get myself out of this reading slump, I'm not doing the greatest. There aren't very many updates to give. <laughs> I think I'm still going strong. I think I may tap out at around 2.45. Could be wrong though. I'll keep you updated. Okay, so I've actually made some progress. It is currently 12.35. I am on page 116. I am questioning Alex's character a lot more than I did when I started reading it and when I read it last. I guess I just didn't put that much thought into how he felt about Poppy. So essentially, we are well aware that there is some pining, at least on Poppy's end, for Alex. But because the story isn't told in the dual POV, we've got no idea what Alex is thinking. But usually you can pick up on some mannerisms of the characters to at least give you some idea of what they're thinking and feeling, none of that on Alex's end, in my opinion at least. So it's just building the angst and suspension even more because I truly do not remember the way this book ended. But I made a lot of notes, a lot more insightful than they were when I started the book because at the start of the book, they were mostly just me like thirsting for Alex, as I should, honestly. But I'm so sucked in at this point and I just want to keep deep diving into these characters and overanalyzing. There's definitely moments where I'm thinking there's no way she put that much thought into this, but she also loves Taylor Swift, so there's definitely a way. But I will check in with you at 1.35. I've got no idea when I'm going to stop reading. If I'm going to stop reading, I want to at least get a couple more chapters in. I wanted to get probably to at least page 200, so this much more of the book. That's a little optimistic, we'll see. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> Let's talk about it. So I totally planned on reading for 24 hours, not straight, just 24 hours. Truthfully, I am just too anxious and too much of a workaholic to do that, but I am giving it another go because if there's anything I don't do, it's give up. So I'm manifesting better vibes this time. Truthfully, I think I can do it, but we've got quite the stack. Much like last time, I still have a backlist of arcs I need to read and review. Truthfully, it's a little overwhelming. I've got two very tall stacks of books that were sent to me. I'm so very grateful, and I would love to not only read and review these books, but also share them with you all. I've got no idea what books to prioritize because I've got arcs going back as early as January. But all of the authors that I've spoken to understand my current situation, so I am very blessed that that is my current scenario. But I've got four books. They're all physical. We are not going the Kindle route this time. I just get too distracted. But I am currently reading Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I am absolutely loving it. I'm only 50 pages in. It is a reread, but I am reading it with my book club lessons love on Fable, and you should totally join. We are just in the Emily Henry mood. So once we're done with this, then we are going to read Summer Reading. It is by Jen McKinley and Berkeley. so kindly sent it to me as an ARC. I actually chose this because it's radiating Emily Henry energy. I currently only want to read Emily Henry books. Obviously it puts me in a predicament because she's only got four adult novels out that I own. The other two books that she wrote, I don't believe they're traditionally published through Berkeley but I don't own them and neither does my library, so you win some, you lose some. But I'm actually very excited for this. I initially was a little worried just because I wasn't sure if there was any spice in it, but truthfully, not every book needs spice and I tend to just get ahead of myself thinking that I'm not gonna enjoy a book, but I'll actually end up loving it. So we're gonna read this. I think that'll take me through today and then tomorrow 
I am planning on reading Lobby according to Rose. So I also got sent this as an ARC. I actually am doing a book campaign for this, so I need to post about it tomorrow. I am part of the TikTok campaign for this book, so we're gonna read this and then we are going to go into Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. I am so excited about this. I was a little nervous. I wasn't going to buy it. My mom actually bought it for me because she is an angel. But I say I wasn't going to buy it because while I absolutely adored The Love Hypothesis, I thought it was such a cute and fun read. I despised Love on the Brain. It was probably one of my least favorite reads of the year thus far. I rated it two stars. Truthfully, I'll probably bump it down to one star. The plot twist just ruined the book for me. It didn't make any sense. It didn't align with any of the character arcs. But once again, that's a conversation for another day. But I genuinely have only seen good reviews about this book. So I am going to allow myself one book of pleasure, if you will. One that I don't necessarily need to post about. Knowing me, I probably still will. To my understanding, most people usually average around five to six hours per book. So I'm definitely thinking I won't be able to read any more than four, but we're also manifesting all the best vibes. So we'll see, but I've got my Starbucks. It is currently at three o'clock. I did want to start earlier, but it's not as late as we started last time. So my goal was to read 12 hours each day, today and tomorrow. I don't think I'm still going to do that, but I do plan on reading until at least midnight tonight. So once I get to midnight, we'll see. Maybe I'll be up for an all nighter. Probably not. Either way, I've got no doubt that I'll be able to complete it all tomorrow. Is that actually wood? But let's get into it. and I am 100 pages exactly into Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I don't remember Charlie and Nora being this bantry and I am absolutely living for it. I am just giggling like a little schoolgirl. I definitely thought it was less comedic than this. I was terribly mistaken, obviously. When I tell you it genuinely feels like I'm reading this for the first time, I totally forgot about the plot between Nora and one of her clients. Dusty, just the way she's writing a book about her, based on her character, it blows my mind. I am low-key living for it, but I will check in with you at 5.45. Okay, so it is currently 5.50. I am 146 pages into Book Lovers, and I completely forgot about the storyline between Charlie and Nora. So we all know Nora is Dusty's agent, but then I forgot that her editor ends up having a baby and so Charlie ends up becoming her editor. So Nora and Charlie have to work together. I am just absolutely eating this up. I am also going to go eat my pasta up because I am hungry. So I will check in with you at probably, I don't even know, but eventually, I'll check in with you eventually. Yeah, it's fine. <gasps> Hello. <laughs> that was so aggressive. You got your dog slobber all over me. Or dog snot. Or both. Okay, friends. It is currently at 9.10. I ate dinner, showered. Then I ran outside for about an hour. But I'm going to be completely transparent. I've got no idea how long I've been doing this. I think I'm on hour five, but I've only done four updates now. <laughs> it's gonna be a long night. I think I am going to pull an all-nighter. I've got myself into a pickle, but I am currently on page 197 of Book Lovers. It feels like I'm reading at such a slow pace. I'm not sure why. So I've also been updating our book club with all of my favorite quotes and moments, just talking with everybody. So I should have also anticipated that, but I've tabbed so much. I think I've tabbed more than people we meet on vacation. That's insane. Anyway, 
I'm not busting out the coffee yet. I think we're gonna wait until a little later. There are just so many parts of the story that I don't remember and I'm absolutely loving it. I just remember this being my least favorite out of all of her books. I truthfully don't think you can put any Emily Henry book on the bottom of the ranking. They're all superior. Happy Place will always be the most superior though. Also, oh my god. So it is currently July 11th and I just watched Emily Henry's Instagram story and she just turned in the draft for the fifth book. So we are getting an Emily Henry book soon. I'm so excited. Granted, it's probably gonna be another year or two. Manifesting, it's only gonna be a year, but I am so excited for all of the cryptic messages she's gonna be sending us in true Swifty nature. But currently I am at the part where Shepard is giving Nora a tour of the town. So, also, who is gonna remind me about the skinny dipping scene? I would sell my left kidney to go skinny dipping with Charlie Lastra. Someone needed to say it, and it's gonna be me. I also just love the way he's getting more playful as the book goes on. It is so he falls first, but I will update you at 10.15. Okay, so it is currently 10.15 and I am on page 260 of Book Lovers and it is so much more angsty than I remembered it being. It's so sad. There's so much more depth to the characters. Truthfully, I don't remember what was going on between Libby and her husband, Brendan. So I'm very interested to see that play out. I'm going tab crazy. I'm on my third shade of purple because I am just out of tabs in general. Nora and Charlie are also very much giving I can see you Taylor's version from the vault vibes. I'm adding that to the playlist. I will update you at 11.15. I'm a little tired, so I might be grabbing my coffee soon, but I'm determined to do this. Okay, so it's still midnight. I'm trekking along. I'm so tired. <laughs> but I am on page 324 of Book Lovers. I'm almost done. I'm so close. I've got like 40 pages left. Yes. I think 40 pages left, give or take. I truly am questioning my ability to accomplish this. Should I just try and sleep for a couple of hours and then keep going? I didn't plan this very well. I need to start planning these more. In the wise words of Dr. Taylor Swift, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I hate when she's right. I am at that pivotal moment when we learn why Libby wanted to take this trip to Sunshine Falls, why there's so much tension between her and Brendan, I am devastated. I truly cannot wait to see the way this all unfolds. So I will check in with you at 1.15ish, give or take. <laughs> So my hour's not quite up yet, but I just finished Book Lovers and I want to cry. I literally love Emily Henry so much. What did we do to deserve her? She just makes me feel so loved. She makes me feel so seen. I want to be friends with Emily Henry. Is she accepting friendship applications? Where do I submit? Let's talk about it. No, because the way I actually slide up in her DMs expecting her to respond, Manifesting she sees them though, but book lovers is brilliant. I'm not sure where it lies on my Emily Henry ranking anymore I think it might actually be above Beatreen. Happy Place is obviously still on top Then people we meet on vacation. This isn't a surprise to anyone. I'm not sure Beatreen was a little angsty at the end. I loved the climax of that the plot twist if you will <laughs> Can I be completely transparent? This entire time, all I've been thinking about is George Weasley. I am in my Harry Potter phase. It's so bad. It was never a phase. It's a lifestyle, clearly. The entire time. <laughs> George Weasley is my Charlie Lastra. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to get ready for bed just in case I fall asleep. 
but plan on starting my next book. I'm so tired. I'm definitely questioning every decision I've ever made. But I updated the book club with all of my thoughts. So if you want to go join, even if you're starting later out in the month, Everything I post in there will be up there until the end of July. We don't switch books until August 1st. I cannot believe the next month is going to be August. That is insane. I don't like that. Re-entering my folklore era, even though I literally never left because it's my favorite album of hers ever. I'm not sure yet what I rate this one. I think I rated it four stars the last time I read it. I think I'm also going to leave it at four stars. Definitely not bumping it up to five stars. I sincerely apologize to all of my book lovers out there, but she didn't come to play around. She definitely still served. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I went to just go update my Goodreads and I rated book lovers five stars when I read it, yet I was under the assumption it was my least favorite book of hers. I just don't understand how I had rated People We Meet on Vacation four stars when it was always ranked above book lovers but i rated book lovers five stars does that make sense i'm not saying it's not a five star read i'm just not understanding girl what were you on what were you doing what were you thinking okay also it is so revolutionary because someone told me that you can actually add your rereads on your goodreads shelf so it'll count toward your reading goal so add dates read when did i start reading this what is today i'm gonna say i started reading it on the 9th that sounds about right. Okay, that sounds great. I don't even know when the ninth was, but we did great. Okay, so it is currently at 12.30 the next day. I did end up going to sleep. I was exhausted. I got through Book Lovers and then I tried reading Summer Reading. So this beautiful book that Berkeley sent me, I was so excited. It was just radiating Emily Henry energy. I thought for sure I was going to love it absolutely despised it, DNF'd it at 1%. I got seven pages in, decided it was not a book meant for me. So the book starts with someone projectile vomiting all over this cruise ship and then her also almost doing so because naturally, if you do it, she's gonna do it. I'm not sure what the thought process was behind the formatting, but for some reason, there are just a bunch of bold words throughout the entire book. The entire book is set up that way. It's so distracting. Why did we do that? I'm not sure. But then it's written like a Wattpad fan fiction and not the good kind. So I set that one aside. I'm going to start Lobby According to Rose. I'm gonna go sit outside. I am going to go get some strawberries and a banana. I'm so excited because this was just a good batch of strawberries. And then I'm gonna drink my water because hot girls drink water. We've gotta stay hydrated. It's Florida. Truthfully, I'm not sure how long I'm going to survive out there, but I'm going to take my sister's dog outside and she's going to keep me company until she gets sick of me. So I'm actually very excited. I read a little of the first page last night. I also am not sure whether or not I want to tab this because the author did sign it and she wrote me this little note. It says, hi, Kaylee. I'm so grateful for your help bringing my debut novel into the world. Thank you. It's absolutely the sweetest. She signed it, but we're going to get started. pages into La Vie According to Rose. I am actually enjoying this a lot more than I expected to. As I said earlier, I did read the first page last night, so I went into it with better expectations than with summer reading. I am just so exhausted, so it's definitely difficult to pay attention to it, but it is all about this girl. Her name is Rose. Essentially, she's in her early 30s. Everything in her life is just going wrong. Her mother wants her to move in with her just because her father passed away and so her mother is all lonely. She thinks since Rose is single, she clearly isn't going anywhere. 
she might as well just move in with her. Rose obviously doesn't want to. Rose's sisters are also depending on her, so Iris is one of her sisters. She's getting married. Then her other sister, Lily, is just a wild child that's just moved in with Rose since she's taking a break from her frat bro boyfriend. To top it all off, Iris set Rose up on a date with a friend of a friend of a neighbor. It does not go well. She ends up getting stranded on the date. So the guy says he'll be back and obviously doesn't come back, leaving her with the bill. She then ends up getting into a car accident on the way home. Not only that, she didn't get the promotion that she was vying for. She's literally carrying this company on her back. Since she's never missed a day of work in her life, HR tells her she needs to take three weeks of paid vacation time. She's a workaholic, she does not like that, but she decides this is the perfect time to do a getaway to Paris. She's experiencing a lot of guilt because her father didn't like traveling at all. She comes from an Iranian immigrant family. Overall, I am very much enjoying this. I think it's gonna be a four star read. I think the car accident was a little too much just because it was brushed past so easily. She definitely should have been a lot more injured than she was. She didn't even go to the hospital, but an SUV crashed into the driver's side and her car was totaled. That's the only part of the story that doesn't make sense to me. But other than that, it's just comforting. Especially after my last read, I'm enjoying this one a lot more. <laughs> the writing style is so much better, but it is currently at two o'clock, so I will update you at three o'clock. Okay, so it is currently four o'clock and I am on page 95 of Lobby, according to Rose. I'm so tired. I want to take a nap, not because the book is boring, but just because I genuinely cannot comprehend anything I'm reading because of how tired I am. I've got no idea what's going on, but I'm enjoying the story thus far. There's currently an art heist going on in Paris. I definitely think Kidridge, the American man she meets while she's in Paris, is the thief just my prediction. I already started making a Pinterest board because I think I'm going to do an aesthetic current read video for the campaign, but usually I am able to make playlists very easily. Not with this book. I will say I'm very interested to see where it's going just because I currently cannot think of any plot points that would stand out. So I'm a little worried that the story is going to get dull the longer we go on because it is around 360 pages, I believe. Yes, it just seems a little long for what's currently going on, but it is definitely a cute read. So I will maybe update you at five if I make it until then. Mm -hmm. 